So hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm finally going to go over how Vault mods work, specifically the feedback mod method. Uh, because there are two main methods for Vault modding, uh, VRM, and this is the one that I'm using. The second one I technically kinda know how it works, but I never did it, so I'm not going to tell you how something works when I actually never did it. So once I do it, uh, there's going to be a second video about vault mods that's going to cover the other method, which is the ref in method. If you wanna do, uh, if you wanna know it right now, I have linked uh, a video from actually hardcore overclocking in the description where he goes over that uh, version of the mod for his GTX 1070 Dual. Um, that mod also only applies for some PWM controllers, whereas the feedback mod method that I'm showing here applies to all uh, PWM controllers. So, um, what I'm going to assume in this video is that you already know how a VRM works, that you know what the PWM controller does, and uh, yeah, so that that's that's basically it. And um, yeah, so if you want to vault mod, so why would you want to vault mod? So if you have a graphics card, it also works for motherboards, but uh, I never did it to a motherboard. It, it, it works the same. I just never did it on a motherboard. Um, so let's say you have a graphics card and you want to go to 1.35 volts or more because some architectures like Nvidia Fermi, uh, they scale a lot with voltage uh, at on and beyond that level. And if you can cool it, yeah, you, you should uh, maybe try that voltage if every M can handle it. And uh, yeah, uh, there's only one way to get there with a feedback mod, because you can BIOS mod NVIDIA cards, but only to 1.1 uh, to 1.213 volts. Um, that's where the NVIDIA voltage table stops. You can't go higher than that with BIOS mods. You could maybe use uh, the I2C interface if your PDRM controller has it and has it enabled. But the feedback mod method right here, which is a physical modification, it's not something in software that you have to have enabled or something. It's a physical override. It's always going to work if you have a datasheet for the controller. It can be done without a datasheet. It's just very difficult because you're going to have to know how the circuit looks. You're trying to modify. Um, whereas with the datasheet, you just have to look up which pin it is and then you can do everything else by yourself. So, um, I have written down some examples of PWM controllers. Uh, that's like, yeah, so our, our imaginary one doesn't really have a specific name, it's just random letters and numbers. That's why the examples are there. Um, you can find a datasheet for all of those. Actually, I didn't, yeah, I think the UP9512 uh, might be difficult to find a datasheet for. I'm not so sure, but I did find a datasheet for all of the other ones. Um, and yeah, so what all PWM controllers share is they have a feedback pin. Most of the time it's just labeled as FB. Sometimes it does have other names. Uh, you're gonna have to look up the datasheet where it explains what each pin does. You're gonna look for the, well, where, where the uh, feedback sense uh, is coming in. And uh, so how the vault mod works is the PWM controller can't tell the VRM to put out X amount of voltage. Uh, the PWM controller tells the high side and low side MOSFETs to turn on and off or to close and open. And by doing that in a specific um, amount of time, uh, you get an average voltage that by the inductor in the VRM gets smoothed out to not just spikes of 0 and 12 volts, but to the actual average uh, that you would see. And yeah, so since the, Peter, uh, since the PWM controller is not saying I'll put X amount of voltage, it needs to know what the VRM is actually outputting uh, so that it can see if it's uh, if it maybe should just keep doing what it's doing, if it should maybe uh, give a little more or less, and that's what the feedback pin is for. So what the feedback pin uh, does, it is it is connected to a voltage divider between V-core and ground. So V-core is your output of the VRM, and ground, well, is obviously ground. Uh, so the feedback pin is not seeing the actual uh, V-core voltage, it's seeing a, uh, yeah, a different voltage uh, inside of that voltage divider. 
I like what a voltage divider is. It is basically a network of resistors. I've uh, displayed it here as two resistors, one before the feedback pin and one after the feedback pin if you go as ground as the destination. And um, yeah, so what the, what the voltage divider does is you have at least two resistors and if you have maybe one volt v-core and both of these resistors have the same value doesn't matter if they're five ohms or five kilo ohms if they have the same value you're gonna have 0.5 volts where the feedback pin is and by changing by using different sized resistors you can change the voltage obviously but um, what you're gonna have to understand is uh, by using this voltage divider you well divide the voltage and we can use that to our advantage because you've seen the orange stuff that I uh, put on here. That is a potentiometer. And what the potentiometer does is you can see we have collected it to in, uh, in parallel to the resistor that goes from feedback to ground. And um, so what we do by putting uh, by connecting this potentiometer, or like you can just use a static resistor too if you want, uh, if you specifically want a certain resistance or voltage level. I just like to use potentiometers for the flexibility. Um, what you do is if you put resistors in parallel, you lower the overall resistance. So by lowering the resistance, we change the voltage divider. We change the voltage levels that you're gonna have at uh, the inside of the voltage divider, which is where the feedback pin is. And if we lower the resistance from feedback to ground, we're gonna have more voltage dropping over uh, that feedback to ground side of the voltage divider, which is, um, the PWM controller doesn't really see that. What the PWM controller sees, it, uh, it compares the difference between V-core and feedback. And if we lower the resistance from feedback to ground, that, um, that difference is going to get bigger or it's uh, going to appear more or less because it, it's going to try to hold a certain level and normally VCOR is at that level. And um, yeah, so if we, uh, if we lower the resistance from feedback to ground, the feedback pin is going to see less voltage than before. And what we do by, uh, what we do, is essentially we trick the PWM controller into thinking that V-Core is lower than it actually is. And now because the PWM controller believes that V-Core is lower, it's going to compensate by raising V-Core until, until it sees the voltage level at feedback uh, on the feedback pin that it expects. Um, what it actually does is it just raises our V-Core to the level that we want, which is higher than you would normally be able to achieve. And that's how it works, basically. So you, you just change a voltage divider and thereby trick the PWM controller into, yeah, into putting out more voltage because it thinks, oh, the voltage just dropped. Um, we should compensate, we should raise the voltage. Whereas in reality, the voltage hasn't changed. You just make it believe it does. So, um, so that that's how far the theory goes. Uh, now, if you want to actually pull it off, so uh, this information, a, a huge part of the video actually is coming from one article on overclock.net from MLLR KLLR88, uh, an article called "General GPU Volt Mod and External VRM Information." I'm also going to link that in the description. Um, that basically goes over all the stuff that I just told you and also I'm going to tell you it's just in in a written form if you want to proofread uh, again because if if you're trying to physically modify a very expensive piece of hardware possibly you should probably cross-reference uh, because I could just make an honest mistake or I could even have a malicious, a malicious intent and try to ruin a graphics card way whatever I want to do that I'm I don't have that intent, but I could, which is why you should cross-reference and confirm that what I say is actually real. So yeah, that's uh, you're gonna have that article there, and um, he also goes more into detail and, and shows some. Uh, he uses a GTX 480 as an example and shows you where where to where you would do everything on that board specifically. So this is kind of abstract. Uh, I just 
draw uh, drew an imaginary PWM controller with an imaginary position of the feedback pin, there you're actually going to see where is where everything is. So, and he has a formula um, for uh, what you're gonna do. Um, so, what you if you want to modify your card with a feedback mod, what you're going to do is you're gonna need a multimeter. You're going to need a data sheet for the PWM controller. And what you're gonna do uh, with the multimeter is you're going to identify the feedback pin in the data sheet, then measure the resistance from the feedback pin to ground. And you're going to take that resistance, multiply it by 23, and then take the next highest resistance uh, resistor or um, potentiometer that you have. Like, again, I like to use potentiometers because if it's not exactly right, you can just change it. So, and um, that's the potentiometer size that you want because the resistance from feedback to ground, there's no standard for that. Pretty much every controller has a different value. For example, the GTX 480, um, what he talks about in the article, I also modified my GTX 480 and, and got the same result. The PWM controller for Vico on the 480 has a really, really low resistance from feedback to ground. It's uh, 1.6 ohms. Whereas other PWM controllers for Vico or like uh, VMEM on the same card have a much, much higher resistance in the kilo ohm range. So you want to use a properly sized potentiometer because if you use an improperly sized one, your mod is either not going to do anything or it's going to raise the voltage so high uh, you're going to damage or permanently destroy your card. So yeah, be careful what you do. And um, yeah, so once you've determined the size of potentiometer that you want, you're going to take that potentiometer and connect it like you see it before you. Um, you're going to connect one side. So uh, let's say you, uh, you have a standard potentiometer here. You have a trimmer right there where you turn the resistance up and down and you have legs one, two, and three. And you're going to connect leg two and either leg one or three. Uh, these are the two you're going to connect. And you're going to connect one of the legs to the feedback pin or something that's directly connected to it. You don't have to connect it directly to the pin. It's all, it's most, in most of the cases, it's really, really hard actually just take a capacitor or a resistor that is directly connected to the feedback pin. Um, you're going to see, yeah, that again, the article goes into more, uh, yeah, into more uh, detail about that if you don't exactly know what I mean. So let's say we connect leg two and three. You're going to connect leg two to the feedback pin, which would be this right here. And then we're going to connect leg three to ground, which would be that connection on the potentiometer that I put in. Uh, don't get yourself uh, confused by this. Let's just pretend that, let's just make it like this. These are not touching. Okay. And now, once you've connected that, um, the mod is actually pretty much done. One thing you have to keep in mind is that now where we've connected legs two and three, if we have, let's say, a 2.5 uh, K ohm potentiometer, you're going to have to turn the knob so that legs two and three do actually have those 2.5 K ohms or whatever the maximum resistance of your potentiometer is. You want that maximum resistance between the two legs that you are using. Um, because the less resistance you put your potentiometer to, the higher the voltage is going to be that the mod will produce. So if you turn the resistance all the way down, you're going to get stupid high voltage. I actually did that once, and I ended up um, with a memory VRM that put out 2.1 volts. That's pretty much instant death for any card. The card that ha uh, where it happened to me actually survived, but that was really, really, really lucky. Realistically, the card should have died the instant I turned it on. 2.1 volts is death. Like two volts is it's on and higher is just instant death for modern hardware. Or like uh, GPUs, CPUs, memory chips, 
Now, there's some there's some DDR4 ICs that I can actually take that voltage, but most can't. And yeah, so that's basically it. So what what you now do is you sense the voltage that your VRM is putting out. Um, you can either sense it directly at the VRM if you're concerned about overvolting the VRM too much. Uh, if you want the most precise voltage level, you're going to measure it off a capacitor on the back of the core. Um, yeah, so you measure the voltage there and then you turn the knob on the potentiometer, you turn down the resistance of the potentiometer and that's going to raise the voltage that the VRM will put out. And that's how you do it. That's basically, yeah, that's that's uh, the feedback volt mod. Um, so it's not that hard, actually. It's literally just you identify the feedback pin, you measure the resistance from the feedback pin to ground, you multiply that resistance by 23, take the next highest resistance potentiometer that you have, um, you choose legs two and either one or three. You make sure that the resistance between the two legs you're going to use is actually the maximum uh, resistance you can have on the potentiometer. You connect those two legs, one, one leg to the feedback pin or something that's directly connected to it, the other one to ground. Anywhere on the card, any ground, you can, like any any sort of ground on the card. I've used PCI Express connectors, I've used the grounding of the PWM controller, I've used the ground of display uh, display out connectors I've used the ground of capacitors any ground on the card should work we're not sending any power through that circuit really so any kind of ground maybe not a screw hole those ten they should be fine but those tend to be pretty poorly connected to the ground plane but yeah and then that's it so if you want higher voltage you turn the resistance of the potentiometer down. You want lower voltage, you turn the resistance of the potentiometer back up. What you can also do is you put um, a switch somewhere in there, so like this. And when you open the switch, the mod is completely deactivated and the card is going back to stock because where the potentiometer is no longer, uh, there's no longer a connection from feedback to ground through the potentiometer. So if you have a switch in there and you open the switch, the card is completely back to stock. So if you want it to be, uh, if you want the ability to deactivate the mod, just put a switch in somewhere um, along the red line that I drew. So like you can do it here, you can also do it on the other line, uh, on, on leg two, doesn't matter. You just have to disconnect the potentiometer. Um, yeah, you just have to disconnect the connection from feedback to ground through the potentiometer. And then you have your, uh, then the mod is deactivated. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the feedback pin mod. I've put it off a lot, actually, like, how many times did I do it? Uh, at least five times now. Yeah, I think five times should be it. Yeah, let's, let's just go with five. So. Uh, I did it a couple times. No, actually, I did it seven times, but I do so lot those two. Yeah, so I did it a lot of times, and well, uh, it, it always worked. It's pretty easy. Like, I've summarized it in a couple of seconds, just, uh, yeah. And yeah, so if you, if you want more detail about this, uh, you can go read the article on overclock.net. You can watch the video from actually Arco Overclocking if you want to see how the other version works because the other versions, it has some upsides. Um, it's just not every PWM controller can do it. Now you're going to need one that's uh, a little newer because, well, not every PWM controller can do it. And I think, um, I think the other method is possible on uh, PWM controllers that came out uh, when the NVIDIA GTX 10 series uh, was there and newer. Some of those should have it. I think older, you're not going to find any PWM controllers that can do it. Don't quote me on that, though. It's just I've heard first about it on a 1070. So, and before the video gets too long, oh, we just passed 20, 20 minutes. Huh? Yeah, so before the video gets too long, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. 
And until we see each other next time. Goodbye.